Hi, and welcome back to T2W Garage. So today, I want to give you a little behind the scenes look at my air compressor setup here in the garage. So I've had a few questions from various viewers about the compressor that I'm using and the pipes on the wall behind it, what that does. So I wanted to take this opportunity to make this video to just give you a closer look, explain how I, how I built this and what everything does. Uh, this would be a great video if you've been curious about this or if you're thinking about building your own air compressor system for your garage. So stick around and we'll get started right after this. I want to thank toolvector.com for their support of Tim 2 Wheels. While you're there, use the T2W discount code. You'll save 10% on your order. Okay, so I'm over here in the corner of my shop where I have uh, my compressor set up and I will get to this in just a moment and talk about everything. But before I do, I just wanted to let you know what I was using prior to going with this configuration, this, this new setup. So for nearly two decades, I used this little Porter Cable Pancake Compressor. Now Pancake just refers to the style of compressor. It's got this short little round uh, tank under the bottom that looks like a pancake, so they're called Pancake Compressors. It's a little portable unit, um, and this is a uh, CF2600. Again, it's almost 20 years old, so I don't know if they even make this model anymore. But I will say this has been a great little compressor. The reason for the upgrade is that I continued over the years to add more and more tools to my collection, pneumatic tools, that required more and more air uh, to run. Um, I'm thinking about adding even more tools uh, to my collection. I really would like to get a, a plasma cutter. And if you know anything about plasma cutters, they uh, require a lot a good steady supply of very clean, very dry air. And that's something that this little unit just couldn't do. And that's where this guy comes in. So uh, again, this has been in place for about a little over a year. Uh, I, uh, for several years, I've been uh, working in the back of my mind that I needed more air, I needed a bigger compressor. So I started looking, I took a realistic uh, look at my own uh, cubic feet or CFM uh, needs for the tools that I was running and the tools that I expected to be running in the near future. And uh, I settled on looking at compressors within this range. You may or may not know, I'll, I'll give just a quick little primer on air compressors here. So typically compressors are rated by the horsepower of the motor the, uh, and the size of the tank are the two typical indicators that you'll see. So in this case, this is a three horsepower uh, 60 gallon uh, compressor. Now you do, you want to look at more detail other than just the horsepower and the gallons because you what's really important is how many CFM or cubic feet per minute that the compressor can sustain um, and they'll all have ratings at usually at different PSI or pounds per square inch. So um, uh, at any rate uh, you look at what the sustainable a CFM is at a given PSI and, and then see if that's going to meet your needs. From an installation standpoint, it did require a 230 volt circuit at 20 amps. Uh, I did anchor it to the floor, uh, so follow the manufacturer's uh, directions and anchored it to the floor and it's sitting on rubber anti-vibration pads. Uh, so it's not going to fall over. I mean, you can swing on this thing, you can try to rock it, but it's not going anywhere. It is actually anchored to the concrete. And that's to keep it from moving around and vibrating around. You, you know, and it's, it's fairly top heavy because the compressor and the engine and the motor is up top. All right, so I'm going to uh, switch it on here in just a moment and let you hear it. Uh, I think this one's rated at 81 decibels as far as sound, but it's not that loud. It's a low pump, a low pitch. And just, just take a listen here. So that's the sound of it uh, when it does kick on and run. Now, a lot of times I'll kick it on, let it charge up in the morning. If I'm going to be out in the garage working, I'll go get a cup of coffee, do whatever I'm doing, and then let it charge the tank up. Uh, and it, it doesn't take it too awfully long to get up to 150 PSI in the tank, which is typically what it stores in the tank. But when you buy a compressor, you get the compressor itself. Now some have more options than others. One of the nice features that it had was that it had a ball valve pre-installed in the bottom of the tank 
to use as a drain. And uh, uh, so, and I'll show you what that looks like here. So taking a look down here at the bottom of the tank, you can see what I spoke about earlier, how I had the anchors in place and uh, the rubber anti-vibration pads that it's sitting on. Uh, but the main thing I'm gonna show you was this ball valve. Now, uh, this particular compressor unit came with the line and the ball valve mounted down here on the foot, which I thought was a very nice feature. Not all of them have that. Now, I installed the little piece of copper tubing you see here running out of that, and it turns and runs out my garage door. Since this is sitting so close to my garage door, I just vented it out underneath the rolling door. So what I have to do from time to time is just open this ball valve. And what that does is it vents any moisture that's collected in the bottom of the tank. The tap for this is at the very bottom of the arch of the tank and I'm able to turn this on and the air pressure just pushes any water out and shoots it out underneath my door. So back up here at the business end of the compressor, uh, you might ask yourself, why is there water in the tank? How does that happen? Uh, that's just a simple fact of compressing the air. So the way this works is it's pulling air in through these filters uh, and uh, the pump is turning or the motor is turning the compressor, which is basically a pump uh, with two cylinders, two pistons, just like an internal combustion engine. Uh, the difference is that this is pulling air in. These round, these round things here are air filters, so it's pulling air from the outside here into the cylinder on the downstroke, and then it's compressing that air in the cylinder and passing it over. So the air has moisture in it, unless you live in a very arid, dry climate the air that we're breathing right now has a lot of moisture in it. Now on a hot, humid day here in the southeast, there's a lot of moisture in the air, so it's pulling that in and that air, or that moisture, is trapped in the air. So as it's compressing the air in these cylinders, it's generating heat. The air is getting hot uh, just from the action of compressing it. And as it's flowing down these tubes into the tank, that air is very hot. As it enters the tank, uh, the air tends to cool after it sets in the tank for a while. And then as it cools, just like any other air, uh, the moisture in the air condenses back into a state of liquid. Uh, and that settles at the bottom of the tank. Some of it, not all of it. And that's why the little ball valve is, is nice to have that you can drain any water that collects in the tank out of your tank so it doesn't rust over time. As you use the air out of the tank, there's still moisture in that air. And that's what the uh, copper pipe grid on the wall and my uh, three-stage regulator with filters and a mist, uh, mist separator. And I'll explain how all that ties in. The air that's coming out of the tank still has moisture in it. And the advantage of running it through copper pipe instead of just coming straight into your regulator which you can do is that this gives it the air an opportunity to cool even further. All right, so taking a closer look here, uh, this is the tank of the compressor. And you can see this is the line that comes out of it here. Uh, that's a half inch connector that feeds out. There is a ball valve that was pre-installed in the tank. Now, the uh, ball valve is connected to a half inch uh, feeder hose, and that is a flexible hose. The reason that the hoses going in and out of the grid are, are rubber is that you don't want it to transfer any vibration from the compressor to the, to the grid that is rigid and could break with a lot of vibration. So the, the hose is coming out, and as you can see oh, back there, it's feeding into the far leg of the copper tubing. Now while we're down here, I want to show you that the copper tubing has four five-foot runs that go up and down. So each down leg of the copper tubing uh, is where the moisture can collect. So as the air comes out and travels up a leg over and then back down the second leg, uh, they cross at this, at the bottom, they cross here at these cross pieces and go back up the other leg and down. So every down leg, I have this section of pipe on here with a ball valve installed at the bottom. And what that does is it gives moisture a chance as the air is traveling up these legs, the air is cooling, the moisture is condensing into liquid water, and it falls and settles at the bottom 
of each of these legs. So as the water sets at the bottom of these legs, I can come in here and open these occasionally and drain any water that might have collected. Now I do get water in these, but usually I get a lot in that first leg. I get a little less in the second leg. So the first and second leg are usually where I have any moisture that collects. Very rarely will I have any moisture in this third leg and then almost never have moisture in the fourth leg. And this fifth leg that you see is actually on the output side, uh, on the other side of my regulator, uh, and I never ever have moisture in here, but I have a ball valve just in case. Okay, so on my, at the bottom of my fourth and final down leg, I have this uh, hose that comes out of here and comes up and feeds into my three-stage regulator assembly. Now the three-stage regulator assembly consists of three stages, and the first is a, uh, an air filter stage. So this air filter stage has uh, a, a filter in it that will filter out dirt and moisture uh, down to 10 microns. So it's not a super fine, but it gets the bigger stuff out. The second stage is a mist, what's called a mist separator, and it will filter down to 0.3 microns. So the theory is, is that this, if there's any dirt or moisture in the line, which usually there's no moisture, it'll pick it up here down to 10 microns. This second stage will filter down to 0.3 microns, so it's very clean at that point. And then the third stage is my regulator, where I would adjust the actual pressure that goes out to my tools that I'm working with. Now there is a gauge here that we saw. Uh, that's the pressure gauge indicating the pressure in the tank. So uh, that can be like around 150 PSI, but then I adjust here, you pull this down, and then you can adjust it to uh, set your pressure to your working pressure. That can be 90 PSI, 70 PSI, 100, whatever your tool is requiring that you're working with. Now, uh, you'll notice that uh, these filters have these little sight glasses in them with the diagonal pattern. What that does is it helps you see if there's any water. Now, you can hook this up directly to your tank and let this guy do all the work as far as filtering out the moisture and the, uh, uh, the dirt out of your air. Uh, I opted to build my own drying grid out of the copper pipe to help reduce the water and reduce the work that this guy has to do and therefore reducing the amount that I have to change filters, which saves money. Now, this particular one I opted, and I have a link below so you can see the specs, the detailed specs on this, but this has the auto drain valves in the bottom. Now, if I touch these, you'll see it lets air out, but uh, the way they work, the auto portion of this is that at the end of the day, when you drain all the air out of your tank and there's no pressure on these, they will automatically open and allow any moisture that you have captured in here to drip out or to drain out onto the floor. Now you can put tubes in here and route them out into a bucket or a tank or whatever you want to do. So that, that's a really nice feature. And there's a filter element in here that you can pull this, turn, and unlock and replace those filter elements as needed. I have been running this system for over a year and I'm happy to say that I have never, ever, ever had any water in either of these. Now you may say, well, that's a waste. You spent good money to buy this three-stage uh, filter system and, and regulator, but it's there as uh, a backup just to ensure that I have really good, clean, dry air. The outbound side of the regulator assembly goes into this fourth uh, down tube of uh, of copper piping. There's also a uh, plug here, a receptacle to plug in a smaller, I believe it's quarter inch uh, hose that I use, uh, you know, my original hose that came with the other compressor, and I use that to run some of my smaller tools. This pipe goes up and across here and then goes over here and then up to a T-fitting uh, where it then splits out and feeds both of my reels up top. Now, this is a good time to tell you that the copper pipe is all half inch, all the fittings, everything from the tank, everything from the out port on the tank all the way up to my hose reels is all half inch. Why is that important? 
Well, the biggest line that I'm feeding is a half inch line, and I didn't want any reduction in airflow to that larger line. Now you can run smaller lines off of it without any problem, but I didn't want to restrict it. So I ran half inch everything. So all the copper pipe, all the fittings, all the hoses, everything all the way through up to the reel is all half inch to allow for optimum airflow. So speaking of the reels, uh, this one on this side is a half inch and that is a big connector. So if you've never seen a half inch line, it is half inch internal diameter on the hose and the fittings are, are much bigger. As you can see, I can get my whole into my finger inside there. I use this to run my biggest tools, my larger impact wrenches uh, when I'm working on heavier equipment or trucks and things of that nature. Sometimes you need that extra power to the tool in order to get it to uh, break the tough stuff loose. Roll that back up. And this one is a 3 8 So this hose is a 3 8 inch uh, internal diameter. Now this is the line that I use 90% of the time. I'm running, uh, I've retrofitted most of my tools to have a, a 3 8 inch uh, Milton connector on it. I love the Milton connectors because they just simply don't leak and they work great. Um, so uh, most of my tools have the 3 8 I uh, do have my bigger tools with a half inch, and then some have the smaller uh, quarter inch uh, plug. I believe it's quarter inch. So these reels are great. As you can see, I can just uh, pull the line back up. Now each of these reels are fif have 50 feet of hose on them. So why that's nice is that uh, even though I have a small shop here, and I certainly don't need 50 foot of air hose inside a little one car garage shop, I do a lot of work uh, out in the driveway when I'm working on cars and trucks um, that I can't get in my garage. So I do a lot of work outside, unfortunately, on the gravel. Someday I hope to have a big garage that I can pull everything inside and work on it. But for now, I have to make do with what I've got. So the 50 foot hose is great. I can pull that out, take it out into the, uh, to the driveway and work out there on the vehicles. I can pull both of those lines out and work with uh, multiple tools. In addition, I have my other line I can hook in down here and run out there for other smaller items. And when I'm done, I just simply let them retract and reel back up. The hoses are stored up nice and neat out of the way. Uh, since they're mounted above the compressor, I didn't lose any shop space. So I have this entire uh, setup uh, here in a very small footprint in the corner of my garage. Okay, so I hope that was helpful in giving you a look at, at what my setup is. Uh, I wanna be clear, I'm not trying to sell you this compressor, or this regulator assembly. I'm just showing you what I have in my shop. Now I do have links to these items below if you wanna to go to check them out and see what you think. Again, the compressor came from Northern Tool. The regulator and the reels you can get through Amazon. Uh, the reels you can also get at Northern Tool if you have one locally. I do have links to everything in the description below uh, and on my website on the Stuff I Use page. So if you're ever interested, uh, go check those out. And you can look at the detailed specs, the current pricing, that sort of thing. Uh, I've been using this setup for a little over a year and uh, I've been very, very happy with it. Now I did do a lot of research before buying these units and checked out their reviews and I think for the bang for buck, uh, I got a really good deal and I've been very, very happy uh, with it. Now if there's still questions you have about any of this, uh, please leave a comment and I will do my best to get back to you and answer those questions. So this is Tim Two Wheels. And this was a behind the scenes look at my air compressor setup. Thank you so much for watching.